What's up, and fans? Day six of training camp. Um, so it's, it was a short one. Not a lot of news or notes. There actually was a big news that kind of scared the shit out of me while I was reading it. Um, you probably could tell from the title, but I will get into it. Trust me on that. Just a few notes. Um, Omar Kelly tweeted out a tweet um, yesterday where he interviewed, um, where he talked to an offensive lineman. And essentially the offensive lineman said that a lot of times the uh, offensive line looks bad in training camp and stuff because they don't really run the ball that a lot often. So the defensive line just pins the ear back and goes after the quarterback. So, you know, because when the run, up, run sets up the play and vice versa. So that's probably why um, it looks like the offensive line is caca. No Isaiah Ford today, no Brendel today, and AJ Derby is day to day. Adam Gay says. Um, Sam Young is getting first team reps at right tackle. That's because Juwan James is banged up. He's like got a muscle tweak or something like that, they said. And Tankersley is with the ones now. That whole rotation's happening. So now let's get into the good stuff, or as I like to say, let's get started. So we started off with Kenyon Drake four yard run behind the right side of Sam Young. Then Gore with a nice 14 yard touchdown run right behind Sam Young again. Uh, Frank Gore is looking really good. Um, he's looking young, spry, fast, so good signing. Again, I think this offseason and these um, free agents that we signed is really good. Mika Fitzpatrick and Smith have been doing some work with the first teams uh, with safeties. And then Kenyon Drake with a nice run in the red zone. Ryan Tannehill scrambles for a touchdown in the red zone. They're saying he's looking really good with his scrambling, so that's a plus. Vincent Taylor with a nice tackle in the backfield. Again, we can't really evaluate the offensive defensive line and the linebackers because you can't tackle to the ground in training camp. So we won't know until um, next Thursday when we face the Bucks. Home. Mika Fitzpatrick puts uh, Escobar tight end on the ground with a nice shoulder hit. Um, Tannehill pass touchdown to Amendola, red zone. Um, expect to hear this a lot, even in the season. Uh, five yard touchdown run from Kenyon Drake. Uh, the O-line is looking much better, but that's at this point in practice. So we'll see how they do with the rest of practice. Um, and then Mika Fitzpatrick joined Rashad Jones for some red zone drills. So that's cool. Again, he's getting first team uh, work. And then Chase Allen was the starting outside linebacker with um, Raekwon McMillan and Kiko Alonso, but I'm pretty sure he earned that because he was kicking ass uh, last week. Howard, great deep coverage on Kenny Stills. Um, Stills seemed to have gotten a distance from uh, Xavier Howard, but the pass wasn't led enough. So Howard can catch up, but where have we seen that before? Right here. How you doing, Patriots? Um, pass interference on Tony Lippett. Tony Lippett is kind of, uh, he's slipping uh, after, you know, a great performance in OTAs and stuff. Um, Drake fumbles uh, in the red zone. Got it. We got to limit, eliminate turnovers, people. Um, Kiko Alonso with an interception on Tannehill. Um, and then Tannehill, this is the scary part. So uh, Tannehill throws an interception to Kiko Alonso. Uh, some people are saying that Cameron Wake leveled uh, Ryan Tannehill, and then other people are saying that Kilgore fell into Ryan Tannehill. Um, he got up, like, and he was like all like wobbly and weird, and he walked to the sideline with his hands on his hips, and then they did special teams drills, so Adam Gase was able to talk to Tannehill. Um, but like, when I read that, I was like, come on. Come on. Um, but Adam Gase addresses that in his press conference, which is going to be after this. Um, but he's okay. Tan Hill's fine. He might not uh, be doing much tomorrow just to give him a rest, but he's fine. And then Red Zone was looking bad for the offense. The fumble, the interception wasn't looking good. Um, and then you just, uh, we find out that Drawn James just tweaked something, like I said before. Um, but that's the training camp stuff. Not It was a very eventful day, except for, you know, the touchdown run, Gore's run, the sack, the interceptions, you know. So let's get to Adam Gase's press conference. And he started off by saying that um, Sitton's a good mentor and he's really good communicator to have Tunsil right next to him. So hopefully they can, he can 
teach him and mold him and make him into that left tackle that we drafted him to be because without him at left tackle, we might be screwed. Um, when he t They asked him about Tannehill, if he was okay and all that stuff, and he essentially said he just got cleated. So he just got kicked by the cleats, and that's why he was all wobbly and, like, favoriting his leg. He didn't hurt the ACL. The ACL's fine. It's just he got kicked by cleats. Monitoring how much uh, Sinton is practicing, I'm hoping just in training camp, uh, but they said he played enough games that he doesn't need to practice that much. So I guess it's another, like, vet-type thing where, um, like, Jason Taylor used to not practice a lot. Um, I know a lot of the vets, they just, like, Frank Gore didn't practice a lot in OTAs, so... Um, but I want that continuity. I don't want another Mike Pouncey situation. Um, they said Drawn James has a muscle strain, so he might not be practicing tomorrow either. Uh, keep you guys updated on that. Uh, Lippitt had days where he looked like 2016, and then he had days where Jakeem Grant was burning him. So I think it's just him shaking off the rust of sitting a whole year out, so I'm not worried. Um, and then he said Levante Carew needs to perform in games. And he needs to not look at the depth chart and he needs to not worry about where he is and just perform and fight because if he needs wants to be on this job he's got a ton of receivers that are ahead of him that are doing better um and then the final thing adam gay says is they're really focusing on um pre-snap penalties and turnovers because that raiders game last year where we had how many fucking penalties and that's the only reason we lost that raiders game the raiders game and the bucks game we should have won those two games and i know this is like oh dog you just did it if we played sound football if we played football like we did against the patriots against the bucks and the fucking raiders we would have been in the playoffs last year i know that's crazy to sound i know i sound like an idiot because we sucked with jay cutler but think about that guys we would have been what eight and eight or, you know, and that Buffalo game at the end of the year would have meant something more than it did. So, just think about it that way. Cut the penalties out, cut the turnovers out, and you will win games. Look at the 2008 Dolphins. They had a great um, turnover differential, and that's what won in most of those games. Okay, so now comment of the day, and this one comes from the creationification, if I'm saying it right. And he asked, is Devontae Parker a bust? Um, it's hard to say. He, when he's healthy and he plays to his potential, he's really good. It's when he's injured and he's playing injured with his bum ankle or his hamstring or something is when he sucks because he can make plays. So, is he a bust? I, I think this year will tell if he's a bust or not because I don't know. He's leaning towards a bust. He hasn't done much. He's shined, but then there's certain games last year where he would like catch the ball and smack it in the air, and then they would be an interception and cost us games. So is he a bust? Let's see after this season. Let's see if he's still with the team at the end of the season because Isaiah Ford's playing great, and all these other receivers are playing great. He might get traded, but I'm not saying I want him to, and I'm not saying it's a definite, but he might. But anyway... Comment below. Let me know any questions or anything you could, you know, you want to ask, uh, and I will pick you for comment of the day. Do uh, you guys? I, I had a comment before. I know I get trolls, so I ignore a lot of comments. But I had a comment before where the guy was like, um, "Where's the live feed? I'm tired of hearing you talk." Or I didn't. I don't want to hear you talk. Do you guys like me doing this for training camp? Uh, let me know below. Um, I started adding videos to show you what's going on, but. I show you what I'm seeing, so if I have no feed or if I have no videos of training camp while I'm editing this, then I can't help you, so I try to make it entertaining so you're not just sitting there watching me talk, but let me know if you guys like this, if you want me to change it up, if you want me to make it shorter, add more videos, do other things, uh, if I'm boring you, let me know. I obviously do this for you guys, um, I appreciate all you guys, we just broke 1100 subscribers, so you guys are the best uh follow me on twitter i had a nice conversation with a few of you guys on twitter so i appreciate you guys following me on twitter I follow my second channel next week madden comes out guys next week madden will be played on the bit boys go check out the second channel um again sorry about the different room i'm hoping i was able to put something cool in the background while i'm making this video being that 
if I did it right, you don't know that it's a white wall. Um, but yeah, I appreciate you guys. Um, sorry if the camera's shaky, I'm using my phone. Um, subscribe. Season starts next week for the Dolphins. Home for the Bucks Thursday night. Um, hit that like button. Um, let me, you guys hitting the like button lets me know that you guys like what I'm saying and you like these videos. So, you know, it's been breaking 100 every time and I really appreciate it. Um, this weekend, I will release a video specifically talking about training camp, obviously, if there is training camp. I know it's, we, there's only like five or like seven or eight training camps left, but I will, if there's training camp video, I'll send, um, post a training camp video. Also this weekend, I'm going to post either Friday or Saturday, a video going into full detail about this fantasy football thing that I got planned. So look out for that. Again, subscribe, hit that like button, um, share the channel. Let's make this thing grow like it is. And other than that, I will see you guys tomorrow because there is training camp tomorrow. And like usual, fins up. Monday, little tidbit notes like usual before we get into the 11 on 11s. They did 11 on 11s, they did red zones, they did from the 20 yard, and they did third downs. So a bunch of things and then I got some player quotes and I got Cameron Wake and Adam Gase press conferences and then I got comments.